professional development seen as really important. It was recommended by friends, peers, and the benefits they could see the potential for from IFL and networking opportunities. So a quote, a great tool to advance teachers' trainers into the next decade. So very forward-thinking uh, kinds of responses from uh, members. IFL is an attempt to ensure that quality is maintained by enforcing teaching qualifications. So this is from teachers' trainers themselves wanting a degree of enforcement. I sincerely hope not watered down. So quite a strong imperative from a number of responses, significant numbers, saying hold, hold the, the fort, make sure that that standard and standing of professionalism is held up. We're proud of that. We don't want to lose that and also wanting a reminder of IFL benefits and wanting to know more about those and what those can be. About one third of um, those who responded were confident they knew what was counting as CPD, so it's not um, a number of hours only, it's a whole range and flexible ways in which CPD can be carried out, can be mentoring, can be coming to an event like this and reflecting any activities that have an impact and a positive benefit uh, for learners and we also have a workshop, um, Jean Kelly and colleagues running that, so do join us uh, for that workshop on professional development, uh, I'd be delighted to see you uh, there. Um, benefits that were known you know, the already and this is in quite early stages for us with, uh, in terms of the scale of membership, so many of our members would have only been with IFL for perhaps four months or six months, so not really had a chance to exploit the range of benefits. Um, and we're increasing them too. Um, but the ones that they knew about and valued included the IFL newsletter, the website, the free reflectal, which we'll be sharing more uh, in the workshop for, for those who come, uh, how that works. It's a fantastic um, architecture for professional development and support, very flexible support for teachers and trainers. Over 15,000 using that currently and a lot of really good feedback on it. Um, however, one third not yet aware of benefits, so we've got work to do. Um, the value of benefits so far, over half very good, uh, sorry, good or very good or excellent, a quarter fair, just over 10% thinking poor so far. So again, big challenge back to us about extending the benefits and making sure they're really relevant and the right ones. <coughs> what we did sense in the feedback is uh, from members is a bit of a tipping point. Um, and this last uh, quote on, on the slide confirms that. Haven't made any efforts to understand what's available. That's clearly my responsibility. So an individual professional wanting to step up to the plate, I need to be looking out and I need to be taking my professional development in my own hands. Um, however, feeling that they were made to join didn't sort of encourage them, um, but clearly advantages from being a member and want to explore that further. And I think that almost epitomises the stage of development that we're, we're at. The benefits that I, IFL members want, and the caution with this is it doesn't necessarily mean that IFL will deliver all of these benefits ourselves. It might be some of them are more appropriate um, through ELSIS and commission work or from elsewhere, but some certainly sit as IFL responsibilities. Um, the first one, training workshops and courses, we may do some of that. On the whole, um, it's other agencies that, that will do that, but a great appetite uh, from members for that. Very surprising to, to me, but you, 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 you perhaps won't be. Um, it was something like 41% of members wanted to have discounts on a whole range of educational journals, newspapers, etc., showing a, a, both a value for money interest, but also wanting to make sure that they were keeping up to date and uh, being very professional with the latest developments in policy or in practice and sharing that. Very proud of having a professional logo and wanting to have that imprimatur, that recognition of being a professional. Library service, online forum and discussion boards, special interest groups, some of those around equality and diversity, some around particular subject areas. So again, with ELSIS and, and partners, we'll be um, looking at who does what so that we're giving the best range for members. Um, a few critical comments from members about employers, and uh, I'm sure as uh, we, we will all stand with broad shoulders as we listen to some of these messages. But members wanted IFL to take initiative to tell them about changes and opportunities in the sector rather than relying 
on employers to do that for them. And that's not that they didn't want employers to do it, but they perhaps recognising that it's quite hard for employers to distill the range of developments, Graham's been talking about many of them at the conference, in a way that's meaningful and helpful for teachers, trainers. That's a lot of interpretation, a lot of distilling. And wouldn't it be helpful if the professional body could help support both you as employers and uh, our members uh, to do that, to bring out what's relevant for them. Um, the IFL should listen to views from the coalface and the bullet uh, above, and it is a, a quote, uh, members were looking for IFL to make employers responsible for providing and funding CPD. I believe that that's something that you want to do and that you will be doing and you will be doing more of. And I hope in future surveys that we begin to see that pattern shift because underlying is a bit of a question mark about whether um, all employers are making sure those opportunities are there for teachers, uh, trainers, assessors. Um, this was um, a comment from the adult and community learning wanting to improve the status of tutors. Um, but I've kept it in there because I dare say that reads across very much for work-based learning and you, you'll tell me um, about that too. And improving public uh, perception of skills and FE. Well done to IFL. I was cynical, but not now. That tipping point, wanting to get members' views on equality and diversity, wanting to share information, expertise in those areas, um, and um, keen that IFL listens to our members. Um, very uh, pleasing for us, and we've worked hard at this, but we've got more to do, that IFL is seen as begin valuing our members genuinely and that we're making huge efforts to be useful. We have more to do, but that's very much the culture and the style that we want to uh, work, work in um, with our members. And then interestingly, uh, in equality and diversity, the academic and vocational divide and overcoming that, still a very, very live issue to trainers um, and assessors and tutors. Um, next steps for IFL. We're developing the strategic plan, as I said. We've got a new um, website being developed, uh, so that will be, a I think, 70% of respondents said they'd actively use the website, so it's a very key way for members to keep in touch with developments. Um, we'll be setting up special interest groups for members, particularly where, as a national professional body, we can give something that's distinctive that other bodies might not be doing. So around career development, part-time tutors, um, assessors trained, people who might be more isolated in their places of employment, perhaps minority subject areas where um, there's a, a, a need to, to join those communities. As I say, linking very closely with other organisations like ELSIS in uh, working those up. More member benefits and uh, um, we've got a member-led council, the majority of our council are um, teachers uh, or, or trainers. So in conclusion, I think at this point in time um, that many teachers trainers have joined because they felt they were asked to, they were encouraged to, they were required to, but increasingly now that uh, shift to wanting to be a member, wanting the benefits, wanting to influence IFL and wanting IFL in turn to influence elsewhere on behalf of practitioners. We do need, and this is a, a plea and a, a challenge for you, the full membership of W uh, Work-Based Learning um, providers, your, your trainers and assessors, to ensure there is that full voice of the membership fully reflecting the sector, and so that your teachers' trainers can get the benefits of the free services and uh, uh, support that we offer to members. And very much look forward to more dialogue, dialogue about what ALP wants from IFL. So over to you and keep in touch, we'll be working closely with you and the publication will be coming out later um, this autumn and feeding into the strategic plan on the membership survey. So do look out for that with interest and we'll try to pull out a lot more richness from the work-based learning sector particularly. Thank you very much.